Greetings folks, Simon here, and I came across this article over on Switched On Gamer, which I wanted to share with you, by journalist Cody Gravel. I'm not particularly familiar with Cody's work, but he does claim that he has played the Final Fantasy VII Remake at E3, and I will leave a link to this article down in the video description. So, Cody's discussing here the fact that the game Final Fantasy VII Remake is currently touted as an exclusive for the PS4 as it releases next year. And uh, there was actually rumours, of course, coming out last week from the official Xbox Germany Twitter accounts I'm sure many of you saw uh, talking about the fact or rather sharing some images of the game with Xbox artwork so kind of indicating the game is coming to the Xbox as well but Microsoft have since said that was a mistake and Square have clarified that also but something that Cody says here is that this is where the exclusivity really factors in PS4's nearly 100 million install base bodes well for PS5, however positive reviews for Final Fantasy VII Remake could make fans of other consoles jump on board. Let's be honest, there's a very real chance Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 2 would be PS5 exclusive too. That's surely a very tempting thought for Final Fantasy and JRPG fans. I don't think it's much of a secret to say that uh, Microsoft have historically anyway struggled to compete with Sony in terms of the gaming hardware market. And they've often tried to innovate, often at a cost to business as opposed to as a boost to business. When the Xbox One was announced as being online only and with the inability to trade games, a lot of people were not satisfied with that. Even though we're inevitably going to be getting to that point in the future, um, Microsoft, I think, were trying to innovate and push a little bit too early. And Sony capitalised on that and made a lot of money by making fun of them. Now, I think Sony are, again, trying to get ahead of the curve here. And this deal with Square for the Final Fantasy VII Remake exclusivity has undoubtedly cost them a ton of money. But if this is more long term than we can initially see, right now we're just talking about the PS4 game next year. But if this is more long term, as Cody here suggests it might be, he's got no inside information, this is just his opinion. But if this is going to translate over to the PS5 era and the Xbox Sky, era which isn't going to be too far after the initial launch of Final Fantasy 7 remake then this could have big implications to the early adoption of that next generation hardware as I mentioned in a previous video, I already know with certainty, because people have told me on my YouTube channel, that they have actually gone ahead, that people have gone ahead and purchased a PS4 recently, solely because of the Final Fantasy VII Remake being released next year. Uh, perhaps they've currently only owned a Switch, or they've only owned an Xbox, and they've gone ahead and actually made that purchase for a PS4 solely for this one game. And that's for people that already own a current generation console. Now, think about it. If the PS5 is announced, along with exclusive rights to to the next project in Final Fantasy VII Remake, how many sales are potentially Microsoft going to lose because people want to play the remake and so perhaps they might have chosen an Xbox otherwise but instead will be choosing to purchase a PS5. I reckon that figure could be somewhat substantial. And as anybody in the industry will tell you, early adoption rates are super, super important for console hardware, not only for that initial boost in sales, but over the uh, long term, for the long term life of the hardware, since if you don't get developers on board initially, it's very hard to persuade them to come on over the long term. It's like the whole chicken and the egg thing, if you don't get the customers to buy the console, you don't get the developers to invest in the console, you don't get the developers to invest in the console, then you struggle to continue to get customers, and so on and so forth. I think the Wii U struggled in that sense uh, Nintendo made mistakes and a lot of the time it is down to marketing isn't it because the hardware itself I'm sure is fantastic the current generation of Xbox one is the you know the, the strongest hardware that's currently on the market and yet it's still being trounced by Sony's PS4 which is a weaker form of hardware and the, the you know I think the same can happen again if Microsoft aren't careful going forward with the next generation so yes yeah, Sony are being super smart here snapping up these kinds of exclusives I mean come on Microsoft seriously where were you when Sony and Square were making this deal were you even in the discussions were you even having a seat at the table obviously we can't know one way or another but I kind of get the impression that uh, Microsoft were kind of left in the dust during this one and I understand that historically at least for the last 20 years the Final Fantasy brand has been more closely associated with the PlayStation brand but most of the Final Fantasy games now are available on Xbox, so Microsoft definitely have some relationship with Square. Kind of feel like they need to be pushing a little bit more for these types of things. And Cody finishes his article by saying that there's also a possibility for a re-release of Final Fantasy VII Remake on PS5. Now, 
Let's assume, and by the way, Cody here is talking about the game that's coming out next year, not the follow-up games that are part of this project. But let's assume that uh, the second game in the Final Fantasy VII Remake is years away. Okay, and so the PS5 is going to be coming out, you know, several years before the next game is actually ready to be released. Even if that's the case, and Sony and Square still have this exclusivity, the very fact that the same game that people might have played on PS4 will be exclusive to the PS5 with improved graphics, improved load times, perhaps a few extra uh, pieces of content to entice people, even that alone might be enough for people to embrace the PS5 over than embracing the Xbox. Now it is generally fully recognised that from a consumer's point of view, from our point of view as the players of the games that are actually going out purchasing these games and these pieces of hardware, these consoles, exclusives are generally a frustrating thing because you want to be able to buy your console of choice, whatever that may be, and then buy the games for it. And if there's a game you know that's coming out that you want to play, you want to be able to expect to play it on the console that you've purchased, especially a game such as Final Fantasy VII Remake, which would certainly be capable of being played on all of these different consoles, but because of the exclusivity arrangements, it's not going to be. As a consumer, you know, that can be a little bit frustrating, but from a business point of view, from Square's point of view, from Sony's point of view, and from Microsoft's point of view, it goes so much further than that, that, you know, this is a serious thing that's going on behind the scenes here, and it could potentially have a long-lasting impact on the future of these consoles but anyway folks please do share your thoughts about this in the comment section do you think having uh, Final Fantasy 7 Remake limited to Sony's hardware is going to have a big impact on the next generation of console wars can we still call it that <laughs> uh, or is it not really going to make much difference in the long term of things yeah share your thoughts guys thanks for stopping by checking out the video I'll leave a link to this article in the description and I'll see you next time goodbye